Like a memory orb, I found myself in another mare's body. I didn't even have to guess who it was. She felt a lot like being inside Mom when I viewed her memory orbs. Also, when she spoke, I could tell it was Manette. She was giggling like a foal as Amethyst Star made faces at her from across the workbench. Still giggling, my host said, Stop making me laugh, Star. I have too much work to do. But I thought you liked it when I made faces at you while you worked, Min. Amethyst said as she stopped the weird faces she's been making and sighing. You've been working too much lately. Dwarf Star and I don't see you hardly anymore. I thought you were retiring soon. I am. Manette said as she started pulling a small pouch towards her. The captain, or general now, I guess, asked me to stay out for another month. That's all. We're almost finished with Falling Shadows, and I'm almost done figuring out this strange crystal thing. As she spoke, she used her ma magic to pull out a small crystal from the bag. It was gray and had a crack running down its center. In the middle, there was a zebra glyph. Amethyst looked at it, saying... I've looked that thing over tons of times, Min, and I can't find anything strange about it. You know that Night Stalker was just paranoid? I've told him numerous times that there's no such thing as curses. I don't know why you just don't throw the thing away. Manette sighed. Star, you know as well as I do that they could be real. I thought you'd believe in this kind of thing more after what we've seen. I can honestly understand why you're so worried about it. Look at what happened to the team the past few years. Phoenix Heart died the day Flash Sentry used this thing on the boss. A year later, his adopted parents died during that zebra raid near Hoofington. Greta's grandmother dies a few weeks later from an illness that hasn't been seen in Griffinstone for a hundred years. His sister almost died when a tunnel collapsed a few weeks after that. Thunderlane's brother was killed while fighting a small group of zebras a few months later. Your mother fell ill and died not long after. Then we all lost Comet Trail. And prickly pear. Babs lost her foreleg and now has to get around on cybernetics, which made it so she can't work for the children anymore. The list goes on and on. I know, but all those things are just coincidences. That's how curses work. You think you're cursed, then you start looking at every bad thing going on around you and you're starting to think it's because of that. Did you forget we're in a war right now? Bad things happen. Amethyst said with a sigh. I just want you to stop worrying so much about helping Night Stalker and start being a mother to our son. He's almost a year old now, and he needs both of us. Minette frowned a little, then looked at her mare friend. I know, but I can't. Not just yet. I promise that once I'm finished with this mystery, then I'll be finished with everything. The war, the children, everything. Amethyst sighed, then moved around the table to pull Minette into a tight hug. Fine. But that's it. Once you figure this out and finish with Night Stalker's project, then you're all mine. You have a deal. Manette said, giggling again. Amethyst pulled away, looking over at another larger crystal on the table. If I could have, I would have jumped. It was the memory crystal I'd found in her lab back at the Lucky Horseshoe. She nodded her head towards it, asking, So what's that thing anyway? I felt my host's eyes and mouth widen excitedly. It's one of the greatest invent things I've ever found. Well, I didn't find it myself. A friend of mine who works for the Ministry of Arcane Sciences found it in small ruins while I was working on some project for Twilight. He didn't know what it was, so he sent it to me. It took some digging and a few favors from Rarity to find the books I needed. But it turns out that it's an old version of a memory orb. They call it a memory crystal. Really? I had no idea that kind of magic was even around before the war. How old is it? Amethyst asked, her horn glowing to pull it closer. Manette stopped her quickly by saying, Don't touch it with your magic! Amethyst pulled away, asking, Why? This thing isn't like your normal memory orb. During my research, I've come to find that if you don't activate it the right way, you can be pulled into it, and you might never be able to free yourself from the orb. Also, the memory itself is so in-depth that it's pretty hard to tell if the memory's yours or not. This crystal is at least a thousand years old, if not order. And after many unicorns died because of its misuse, they were banned and mostly destroyed. That's amazing, if not a little scary, Amethyst said. So, how do you activate it? It's simple once you understand it. 
Manette said, activating her magic, then said a simple spell that even I was able to understand the mechanisms towards the crystal. Once it touched the memory crystal, several colored lights appeared in the air over the crystal. A spell to unlock the crystal is simple to do. Once you use it, you just need to match the color code to get it right. This one's code is yellow, red, blue, blue, red, orange, and violet. Once that's done, all you have to do is wrap it in your magic, and you're in. Though you'll still need to have a lot of power to use it. If not, you could get stuck in it for a while, though not forever. Unlocking it helps with that, and once you route, you relock it. Have you viewed it? Amethyst asked. Oh yes, twice, to be exact. I couldn't believe who made the crystal, Minette said, when an alarm started to go off around the lab. What's going on? Amethyst asked when Greta showed up in the small lab. You two get your armor and head to the roof, she said, looking panicked. What's going on? Amethyst asked again. The griffin was turning to run back to the door, but she stopped, saying, Somebody at Halo 1 stole the rangefinder, and just used it on a refugee camp not far from here. No, Minette said, pulling on her magic and teleported before any pony else could say anything. Sure to appear on the roof next to Night Stalker, who was looking to the east where I could see a dust cloud around where a massive blast hit. It wasn't far from Spitfire's Flight Academy. How the hell did any pony get the rangefinder? We had a lockdown in Halo 1. In the only safe place that Children of the Night and Professor Augustine could get to. Night Stalker said angrily. Boss, Cloud and Hats and Thunderlane were near there with Nowhere and Lightning Dust. They're going over the last details of the project, and I think Nowhere was checking in the camp. He might have been in the blast, Manette said. Or he was the one who did that. You know how he feels about his own race now. What would have stopped him from getting the rangefinder from Halo 1 and using it? Night Stalker asked. The spells are put on the safe. He wasn't one of the children who could get into it, Manette said. Are you sure? Night Stalker asked as Greta and Amethyst finally made it to the roof. Yes, I'm sure. He couldn't have been the one to steal the rangefinder. Honestly, I don't know any pony who would. First Augustine told me in her last report that the weapon didn't even work yet. She was still testing the programming. The satellite only went up a week ago, Manette said. He sighed, then looked at Greta. Come with me. We need to get there before ponies, morales do. We need to see if any pony survived, and figure out who took the rangefinder. After that, we need to see if any of our own were caught in the blast. I'll teleport the now, sir, Manette said, starting to pull on her magic. No, you have your own job to take care of, Night Stalker said, opening his wings. But, sir, Manette started. That's an order, Manette. I need you to finish looking into that crystal. I have a feeling this is another problem due to that thing, he said. Let's go, Greta. He flew off, Greta only taking a second to shrug at both the unicorns, saying quickly, I'll message you if you need you. Then they were gone. As they flew away, Amethyst said, I'm starting to think he's right about the curse. Me too. Though I wish he would have let me go. I could have gone through the ponies' heads without any problem, Minette said. Amethyst looked over at my host. I think what you need to do right now is finish with that crystal like Night Stalker said. Easier said than done, my host replied. I think I may be able to help you with that. I know a zebra who's worked with Applewood. She knows a lot about zebra folklore, Amethyst said. How is that going to help me? And how did you meet this zebra anyway? You never go to the Applewood. My host asked. Met her when I was adding to my gem collection. She's just as interested in rare gems as I am. We got to talking, and I found that she knows a lot about the subject of gems, and how her kind uses them for magic. Amethyst said, I guess it's worth a try. Let me grab a radio, and we can head over there. Maybe we'll learn something interesting? Manette said. Amethyst looked back at my host again, saying, If I introduce you to her, you have to do me a favor. My host rolled her eyes. Why? You already told me where she is. Yes, but she won't talk to just anyone about the crystal unless I'm aware with you. She doesn't like most ponies to know that she knows so much about her kind, Amethyst said. My host smiled, then gave in. Fine. What do you want me to do? 
I warn you, though, I'm not doing that thing again with the strap on and the bowler hats. Fine. Guess we'll have to go with Plan B, Amethyst said with a wink. Tomorrow, you and I are going to Canterlot for an entire day for ourselves. No work, no research, no complaints. I want one day where you're away from this place so we can just be happy for a couple and forget about the war for a day. My host smiled and laughed. I think I can manage that. The memory faded with the two mares heading back to the Lucky Horseshoe, the world around them seeming to be forgotten. I could feel the tension in Manette's chest as she went back inside. I could tell she wanted to be with Nightstalker and her team, finding out how one of their weapons fell into the wrong hooves. I jumped as the memory faded, falling back onto my haunches. I looked around for a moment, wondering what the hell had just happened, when then got Lacuna staring off into space. I winced as I got back up, managing to irritate the spot where I was shot a few hours ago as I stood. I looked at Lacuna, asking, What the hell just happened? She didn't respond for a few seconds. When she did, she blinked a few times and said, I have no idea. One of the memory fragments somehow came forth inside of me and connected with your magic. I've never experienced anything like that before. That memory was of my distant grandmother, Manette. Why is one of her memories inside of you? I asked, looking at the alicorn with some confusion. And that is because Manette was taken into unity 200 years ago. She was one of the first who would become one of the goddesses when she was formed. I have a lot of her memories inside of me. She was in a lot of pain when she came looking for her friend Twilight, Lacuna said. That would explain what happened to her then. Every pony just thought she disappeared one day, right before the mega spells blew. I never thought she became an alicorn, I said. She likely never even left the goddess's unity, with how much pain she was in. Her body was likely being used by one of the souls the goddess trusts and can easily control, she said, looking a little ashamed. I thought this goddess could control all the alicorns, I said. Control is a light way to put it. The goddess and the rest of the souls that are part of unity all share one mind. This collective makes it easy for us all to know what's going on with one another, no matter how far we are from the goddess. Control of unity all depends upon who's the stronger. The pony, who becomes what it is now, known as goddess, was once known as Trixie, a mare who is good at deceiving others with her magic and low magical talent. She is a very determined charismatic soul who always thinks she's the greatest. And because of that, she was able to take over early. Once she had control of the hive mind, she started pulling away memories of the others who joined her to keep herself in power. That's what makes me special. She put all the memories she wants forgotten inside of me. Interesting. Still, why did that memory attack me like that? I asked. I do not think it was an attack. I think a part of that memory felt your magic and knew it was familiar. Because of that familiarity, it was drawn to you. She said with a shrug. I wonder why it's that I needed to understand. I said mostly to myself. What are you talking about? That was just a memory. There's no soul inside of me that could have spoken to you. Lacuna said. Maybe I just imagined it. I said, knowing I hadn't. But I really couldn't trust this alicorn. She was nice and all, but she still worked for the goddess. The less she knew, the better. So I continued. So if you're done with me, can I go back inside? One more thing, Shadow. I need you to take this and give it to Violet. Lacuna said, her horn flashing. A jolt of pain shot through my head, making me wince in pain. A second later, the pain was gone. I looked at her, asking, What the hell did you just do to me? I placed a memory inside of you, one that only another alicorn can retrieve. The goddess wants you to tell her about it and have her view it. Once she does, she'll give you the amulet, Lacuna said. I rubbed my head with a hoof, saying, Fine, but damn, that hurt. Can we go back inside now? That was all I needed to do, so yes. Just remember to keep your side of the deal, Lacuna said as she walked past me. Yeah, I know, I said, thinking to myself, as if I'd ever do what you wanted me to. We arrived back at Star House a few minutes later to find Glory already up, sitting next to Scotch on the couch. She was fiddling with her pip buck. 
I don't think she's going to just up and send a signal out through the radio. I know, but I just want to make sure. I don't want to miss too much, just in case. Glory said, looking up at me and Lacuna as we walked in. Oh, I see you met Lacuna. Yeah, I ran into her when I was heading outside. She gave me a bit of a scare. I said, walking back in to sit on the chair across from Glory and Scotch. Lacuna's a little strange for an alicorn, Scotch Tape said. She flipped through the channels on the radio. I still think this is stupid. Glory rolled her eyes. Don't care, just keep listening. You've been searching with me on these messages from Blackjack for three days now. She's not going to send you something like that. How stupid are you? Scotch said with a huff. Smart enough to save your life, Glory said, sounding angry. Whatever, Scotch said, going back to her pit buck. Then she looked up at me. Shadow, why is your pit buck silver and red? I'd forgotten that she'd come down last night when my story was almost finished, so she hadn't heard when I explained what the Mark II was. So I looked over at the filly and said, It's a prototype model, used to test features for the Delta model. This one used to belong to Sweetie Belle. I'm not sure, though, why it's this color. The other two look different, too. Never found out why. Oh. I thought maybe your stable did that to match your mane and eyes? Scotch said as she continued to search the radio stations. I looked down at the silver pit buck with its red accented lines and cocked my head at that. Huh. I never thought about that before. Thought about what? Glory asked. How the Mark II matches my mane and eyes? That's really strange, I said. Or it's just coincidence, Glory remarked. Before I could think of anything else to say to the door, it opened, and Rampage walked in, saying, I'm starting to think finding Blackjack's gonna be impossible. Rampage, I asked, looking at the mare as she shook her mane. She looked over at me, then started to laugh. Wondered how long it'd take you to find this place. Good to see you again, kid. Glory got up from the sofa. Rampage, what are you doing back here? I thought you went to look for Blackjack. Yeah, I did. Couldn't find a trace of her for a while. Figured I'd head back here and see if you have any other clever ideas on how we can find her. She said, then walked over and plopped down in the chair next to me, squashing me into the seat with her bulk. I hope you don't mind if we share. Not at all, I said in a squeaky voice. I really couldn't breathe well. But when an immortal death pony like Rampage wants to share a chair with you, you don't say no. What's with all the damn noise down here? I heard another mare say. Looking up, I saw a yellow mare with a yellow mane coming down the steps. Can't any pony get a little shut-eye around here? Rampage glared over at the Pegasus, saying, Shut up, Psycho Shy. No pony asked you. Psycho Shy looked over at me next, then tilted her head towards me. Who's the kid? Don't tell me you're starting a house for Lost Phillies, Rampage. Bite me, Rampage said. Would both of you shut up? Glory yelled. Psycho Shy, now's not the time. Rampage, stop fighting with her and tell me what's going on. Eh, yeah, like I said, no pony seen Blackjack. I can't follow her trail and there's no trail to find. Rampage said, leaning back on the recliner, and almost sending both of us flying backwards. Scotch looked over at Glory. You know, I may have an idea that might help us find Blackjack. What is it? Glory asked, whipping her head around to look at the filly. I don't know why all you care about finding that nutcase so much, Psycho Shy said, yawning. I'm going back to bed. No, you're not. You're staying right down here and helping, Rampage said with an evil grin. Scotch Tape seemed to ignore the rest as she looked at Glory, saying, I can modify your pip buck to search for her pip buck tag. I have it listed on mine, so I'll rig it so that it can scan for all transmissions she sends out. As soon as she does... We can use Lacuna to teleport us into an area close to where she is. Once that's done, we'll be able to use the tag to find where she's located. 
you can really do that? Glory asked. Hey, why didn't you bring this up earlier? I just thought about it, Scotch said in a huff. I would be willing to go soak up some radiation for a while. If so, if we do find out where she is, I'll have no trouble teleporting as close as possible, Lacuna said. Rampage leaned forward again, making the recliner flip back forward, almost throwing me out of it again. Sounds like a plan to me. Let's get started. <laughs>